Calculus. And welcome to Sanford Flip Math. We are working on AP Calculus. We are working from the Finney Demana Waits Kennedy book. Uh, we are deep into Chapter 5, which is about uh, integrals. Uh, first exposure to integrals, but uh, we've been working with it now for a few few days, uh, for a while. And this particular section is the one that dealt with the fundamental theorem of calculus, which finally and officially connects the two sides of calculus, integral calculus to derivative calculus or differential calculus. And uh, I'm still amazed at the fact that they had anything to do with each other, but the idea that area can be found by undoing rate of change to me is just amazing. So. We're going to do some more examples, uh, and that's really the thrust of this. We're not breaking any new content here, just, just doing examples. Uh, so this particular example is the where we're basically doing the derivative of an integral, and the first half of the fundamental theorem of calculus basically says the derivative of the integral is whatever that inside function is. Now, there are some little things to remember from, like, uh, uh, the properties of integrals that we have to keep in mind uh, and also when we're doing derivatives too. So like for instance, uh, well first of all let's just go ahead and the idea here is uh, whatever this x thing is is just going to get substituted in here. So this is and, and the, again the derivative and the integral so doing d dx of this in effect cancels out the integral. So natural log of 2 plus 3x squared well, this thing was squared, so squared. And then there are two little issues that come up here. One of those issues is when we're doing the derivative, if, there, if the inside of the function has something more interesting in it, now, if this just would have been x, then what I'm about to do wouldn't happen. But since it's 3x squared, I actually have to multiply by the derivative of that inside. So this is going to be times 6x. And then there's one other little issue, and that's... This, this rule works when the constant is on the bottom. Well, the constant on this one's on the top. So since these are switched, it has to be negative. And at that point, we're pretty much done. So you can wrap this up to go. It's good. And if you'd prefer, I know some people like to clean things up a little bit. So negative 6x, natural log of 2 plus 9x to the fourth. And, and that would be a great way to write it. If this was a multiple choice question or something like that, that is a much more likely form for this thing. Okay, one down, moving on. All right, we're going to do some evaluating of integrals. Now, please note that uh, doing an integral is just doing antiderivative. And then, what, so this is using the, the second half of the fundamental theorem of calculus. And the idea is, remember that the capital F pardon me, remember that the capital F is antiderivative of f of x, okay, so whatever we took the derivative of, okay, and then, and then we just substitute in and do the b minus, uh, the f of b minus f of a, okay, so first, first order of business is that we need to do antiderivative. Now, again, a reminder that the antiderivative of x to the n is x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Again, we add 1 to the exponent, and then we divide by the new exponent. So I'm going to say x to the 5 over 2. We have to divide by 5 over 2. And then we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 5. Again, you need to be using proper notation. Now, you don't necessarily have to write it in this form first, because I'm going to rewrite this form, because this is, uh, as I like to refer to as, uh, but ugly. So, when we're dividing by a fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying the, by the reciprocal. And so I'm going to write this like that. And again, we still haven't evaluated it between 5 and 0, so we will. Okay. And uh, so let's, let's just go ahead and, and do that. So we're going to do our little substituting. Uh, so 2 times, sorry. Okay, it's always top minus bottom. Okay. So 2 times... 5 to the 5 halves over 5 minus uh, 2 times 0 to the 5 halves over 5. And we'll do just a, a tiny little bit of math here. Um, this is 2 times 5 to the, now 
this is over 5 to the 1. So just a quick little reminder here. I have the same base in the top and bottom. I can subtract exponents. So 5 halves minus 2 halves is 3 halves minus all of this thing is 0. So I'm really not sweating that. So this is it. Now, if you'd prefer, you could write 2 times the square root of 125. And you can think back to some algebra stuff to understand what just happened there. And uh, we're done. That's it for that problem. Okay, so not bad. The scary thing about that was that issue of that fractional exponent uh, initially. So you're going to have to be comfortable with adding or subtracting or whatever fractions. And I know how you hate the F word, and I'm sorry, but fractions happen. Okay. Okay, one, one more little thing that we could do with this just to clean this up, and I didn't even realize this until just now. Um, the square root of 125 is, uh, so this is 5 times 25. That 25 I can do a square root of. Okay, so, and then this 5 is going to stay in the square root. So this ends up 2 times 5 times the square root of 5. And uh, that's actually the preferred form. That's that's the best form for that. Um, am I okay? Uh, in the same way that AP is okay, I am okay if you leave it like this. I am even okay if you leave it like this. I really prefer it like this, but I, you know, I, I'm okay with any of that because you've you've really handled the calculus, and yes, you should be able to do that. Uh, the other issue is that you know, again, and I keep saying stuff like this. Multiple choice questions would be, you know, if this was a multiple choice, it'd be left as 10 square root of 5. It would not be left as 2 2 square root of 125 would not be one of the choices. Okay, so do understand that uh, you need to be able to handle getting things into a, a decent form. <coughs> okay. All right, moving on again with the bell. And again, with highlighting the bell button, all right, there we go. Sorry about that. Okay. okay. Same exact process as last time. We're again using the second half of uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus, the antiderivative, uh, subtract the antiderivative type deal. So what we're needing to do is look at this and say, what did we take the derivative of to get this? Now, quick reminder that there is a property uh, for for integrals that says if there's a constant, you can pull it out in front. So now, do you need to write this step? I don't really think so, but I need you to at least think about it this way, just so you understand that you can deal with the question of what did I take the derivative of for this separately? Okay. So as you're running through that list in your head, what is that what is that thing that we took the derivative of that we got secant tangent? Well, it was secant, and now we're going to evaluate this from 0 to pi over 3. Okay, so again, back to the same process. What we're going to do is, now this 4, you got, you got an option. You can either write the 4 twice with the subtraction, or you can put parentheses, and that's really up to you. Um, I think I'm just going to write it twice. So 4 times the secant of pi over 3 minus 4 times the secant of 0. Now you need to get out of that mode where you're just automatically thinking anything with a 0 in it is 0. Okay. So a quick little reminder here of a little piece of the unit circle. Okay. I'm not going to do the whole unit circle, but I will look at 0, which is that 1, 0. So that means the cosine of 0 is 1, which also means the secant of 0 is the reciprocal of 1. Okay. Up here at a 60 degree angle, that ordered pair is 1 half square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so, for, and this is for pi over 3. Okay, and so the secant of pi over 3, well, that's based on, let me, let me switch this up, sorry. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, so secant of pi over 3 is 2. All right, so this lets me actually do this problem. Okay, so here's where the 4 might have been easier to deal with if we would have just put it out in parentheses, whatever. So 4 times the secant of pi over 3 minus 4 times the secant of 0. So this is 8 minus 4 is 4. So amazing to me that a problem so ugly can come up with such a nice little answer. Okay. Okay, well, let's do another example. And I think... 
This might be our last example. We might do one more. It depends. Okay. All right. So what we're asked to do is find the area. Now, area is is based on integrals, and in this case, uh, since everything's above the x-axis, we don't have to worry about making negative areas positive. The only thing that's kind of weird about it is that if you notice, this is two separate little chunks. So I really have to do two problems to do this problem. I have to do two pieces. Okay, so our area here is basically going to be the integral. Well, if I call the whole thing f of x, I could say it's the integral uh, from 0 to 2 of f of x dx, but the problem is, is it's, it's piecewise. So ultimately, what I really have to do, and whether you write that initial part or not, I don't care. I really have to do from 0 to 1 of the square root of x dx, and then I'm going to have to do from 1 to 2 of x squared dx. So it's not that big a deal. You just got to do two little pieces. Okay, now one little reminder. I'm just going to rewrite this one more time, and then we'll actually start doing some, some calculus here. Uh, square root is 1 half power, so I can use a power rule when doing the antiderivative. Okay, so this ends up not being such a big deal. All right, well, time to do some antiderivative. Okay, so I'm going to do this one in blue so we can kind of do a little color coordinate type thing here. Okay, so I need to add 1 to the exponent, so that's x to the 3 halves, and I need to divide by 3 halves. I will evaluate that between 0 and 1. Okay, now the other part of this, which I will do in green, although I don't know if you'll be able to tell on the video, uh, this is going to be x to the third, adding 1 to the exponent, divided by the new exponent, evaluate between 1 and 2. Okay, all right, so we just have a bunch of substitution and cleanup to do here. Okay, I, I'm going to write this one more time because I really hate the complex fractions. So I'm going to say 2x to the 3 halves over 3, evaluated from 0 to 1, plus uh, this stays the same. Okay, and hopefully you're okay that I don't keep the color coordinating going because it's going to take me longer. All right, so substitute away. Well, this first one, all right, I will go back to the color coordinating. Um, I need to substitute 1. So 2 times 1 to the 3 halves over 3 minus 2 times 0 to the 3 halves over 3. Okay, so I'm, I, that was that's that whole integral. It's the f of b minus f of a all in there. Now, again, whether you put your parentheses around that or not, I'm not really sweating it. Okay, next next idea, same or same idea. Uh, 2 to the 3rd over 3 minus 1 to the 3rd over 3. Okay, and so now we just need to do some calculating. Okay, so again, I'm not going to worry about colors here. Well, 1 to any power is just 1. So this is just really 2 thirds minus, well, and then 0 to the to a power is 0 times who cares is 0 plus 8 thirds minus 1 third. Okay, so this is 10 thirds minus 1 third, so that's 9 thirds. Sorry, I'm already starting to giggle because I'm always amazed when such an ugly problem with fractions everywhere comes out to it would be a nice number. Don't assume that it has to, though. I mean, life doesn't work in cute little numbers all the time. I mean, even my son is saying I'm older than nine and a half. So, you know, just just know that it's not always going to be cute. Okay. Okay, so please note that in this case, when we're finding area, uh, we had to actually think a little bit of how do we put these two areas together since I had two different equations. You're going to have to just be ready that when finding area, things are not always going to be cute. Sometimes, you know, an integral always finds the area between the curve and the x-axis. Okay, so, so an integral, like, you know, like this is always between uh, whatever the function is and the x-axis. Well, some questions, maybe you want the area between two functions. Some questions maybe want the area that's above 
a graph or inside a rectangle or maybe there's a rectangle missing. So I, I guess just the moral of the story is you're going to have to think. You're going to have to look at it. You might have to draw in some lines yourself and then, you know, make some, make some adjustments, okay? All right, well, that's it for uh, what we're doing here. Come back to this video, uh, look at examples, do examples, you know, see the example, hit pause, uh, etc. cetera, uh, and use it as you will, it'll be here. So, all right, well, thank you for watching, and Sanford Flip, Flip Math, we are out.